Hey everybody, this is Professor Triplett, and today I want to talk to you about making your first models. Well, really more like rules to follow so that you can start off with a nice, good practice, practice. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and just explain a few things before we get going. All right, so right here what we're looking at is well this is probably out of an ikea catalog i don't remember exactly where i got this but it's basically a cabinet and it gives you the dimensions of the cabinet and it gives you a good reference of you know something that you would want to make so that's actually rule number one rule number one is if you're going to go in and model something it's always a good idea to have good references before you start modeling so that way you don't get in the middle of modeling and realize that you did a bunch of work and it's kind of unrecoverable because you need to change something. So if you start off with good references, usually you don't have to change as much and you can do stuff in a way that's turning out good right from the get go. You could see this is a very simple model and I want to explain a few things about this cabinet. We're, we're specifically talking about the cabinet here, not all the other things on top of it. But I want to talk about some of the basics that you might do with this cabinet. I'm going to go ahead and minimize this. Okay, so um, here's the model in Maya. And uh, it's all in pieces. And that's actually really, really important. So what I want to do is push the idea that when you model things, it's a good idea to model them in their logical pieces. That means that if this model is assembled in such a way as it's separate boards you know board for the top board for the side you know board for the bottom that type of thing you assemble it basically the same way you don't need to make this model all out of one piece of geometry i see a lot of beginners that learn kind of box modeling and they start to think that you have to like take a piece of geometry and extrude it and extend it and do all kinds of modeling off of that one piece where sometimes that does come in handy or sometimes that is a way to do things but most of the time when you look at a model you start to break it down into its more, most basic pieces so if you look at this basically when i was building this all i needed to do is basically build one piece like this and then i can go ahead and duplicate and resize each piece uh, just from that one single piece uh, that is going to save you a whole bunch of time and especially if you have pieces like this that are repeating and you can go ahead and just make one lay out the UVs and then repeat that model all the way down uh, the line basically UVs are something where you lay out the model flat so you can put textures on it we'll go into that later it's nothing you have to worry about right now but just know that if you're gonna basically like model this piece here and it's the same piece as over here, if you're gonna do one, you might as well uh, lay out the UVs and make the, UV, make the UVs once and not have to do the UVs twice. Uh, there's ways to transfer UVs from one object to another if they're the same object, but it's easier just to lay it out once and then you can just duplicate the object. So the other thing is, is that you think about objects in kind of like their materials. So if we go back to our picture here, um, you can see that like this is made out of wood here or some kind of composite. And these pieces here are made out of metal. So obviously those are gonna be separate pieces. They're not the same object. Uh, there's like a hole cut in here and then there'd be like a screw in there and then you, you know, you'd bolt the screw in. Now you don't have to build all the stuff that you're not gonna see, that's not important. But it is important to understand that you know, instead of having to cut holes and like extrude and, you know, extrude some kind of face off of this main face to make this little handle, you could just make a little handle and stick it on the front of it. Uh, no one's going to know the difference. No one will be wiser. So if you go ahead and you look at this object, you know, you can just pull that off and it is just its own little piece that was made separately. And in fact, um, you know, if you're never going to see this back face here, you may not even need to have a back face there, especially if you're low poly modeling uh, for let's say cell phones or something like that. You may not want to have those pieces there. Uh, same thing goes for, you know, if you were modeling something like this and you're never gonna see the inside of this cabinet, well, then what's the point of having this face right here? You could just delete that. It'll be a lower poly model, so it's easier to render, it's easier on the computer. 
Uh, that's good for, like I said, if you're doing like low poly modeling for games or something. Um, most games that are on major consoles now, you don't have to worry about that stuff. But back in the day, or if they're on like a cell, you know, some kind of smartphone uh, type of game, you might want to have it um, more efficient and have as little polys as possible. So the other thing that we want to do when we're modeling is we want to make sure that we get our real world sizes into the computer. That being said, when we look at this original piece, we have these real world uh, inches here. And Maya is actually in centimeters. So when I went ahead and made this cabinet, I went ahead and figured out uh, what the centimeters were. And to do that, all you have to do is jump onto Google and type in, you know, centimeters to inches and you it'll come up with a calculator and you can just uh, dial those in. But what I do is uh, I'll have the original piece here. I'll show you what that looks like. So this is the base cube. And I think I have it in. There we go. So this base cube that I have, uh, it comes as a primitive. And as a primitive, you have actual like dimensions that you can dial in. So I'm able to dial in all of the dimensions that I saw on that reference sheet and make a basically a stand in object for whatever I'm going to build on top of. Now, I don't necessarily need to build on top of this as a stand in object, but if I wanted to, there is ways that you can take pieces from this and, you know, build faces off of the pieces of this. Uh, but that's maybe not even necessary either as if I could just build another cube like so it's really tiny in here uh, but you know I could sit there and pull this thing out I'm just scaling at this point you know and I can start scaling this piece on the side and then eventually you know move it over to here and then just get it the right size and that would be how um, I could go about like making these sides now obviously I'm not going to do that right now because I'll do that in a separate tutorial and show how I actually made that uh, and completed the whole thing. But that's, we would just basically make a cube that represents the size and that would be a stand in object. And that's important because one, when you're working with other people, let's say somebody wants to establish this piece in a scene, but you don't have the whole thing built yet. Well, then you can take this piece, build a proxy of it and hand that into your other partners that you're working with and they can use that proxy as a stand-in until you finish the actual piece because you have it the right size and you know that this is the size it's actually going to end up being so that's a really good practice to get into so another thing that you want to do is you want to build your objects in the center of the world so let me show you what I'm talking about so if I bring my grid out my grid is set to 100 units in each direction so it's big enough to go around this th this whole object and uh, the important thing, though, is that as you look at this, you can tell that this thing is perfectly centered in the middle of the grid. Now, why would I want that? Well, a lot of objects are symmetrical, so you can actually use that to your advantage and build things symmetrically so that you only have to build half of it or even sometimes a quarter of it or less. And if you do that, then you'll go ahead and have the same thing on both sides of these uh, these lines that are here. This is the line that represents the x sides, uh, the negative x and the positive x. And this line right here represents the positive z and negative z. So this would be the positive z on this side and the negative z on this side. So if I go ahead and actually, I'll select something here, you can see this little widget here. Uh, the blue direction is the z direction. Um, if I, let's see, let me click off of that. The red arrow is the x direction. And the Y is the green right here. That's the Y direction. Okay, I this always should be coordinating with this thing down here. So the front of my object should be going to the Z direction because that's basically what's considered in the scene, like the front direction. So if I wanted to change my viewport, I can just hold down spacebar and go to my front view. And you can see I'm looking at the front of the actual object. So the same thing, if I go to a right view, then I'm looking at the right side of the object. And this just really helps you build stuff and change between scene, between viewports uh, and get you know different views that you might need a lot easier. And it's basically what's expected when you're doing professional type of modeling. So 
uh, that's an important thing. Eventually, I may move this object up so it's laying on the floor. I may even change the pivot point uh, so that I can basically move the object and it will like snap to a wall type of thing. But that's something we'll go over later. Uh, but in the beginning, when you're first building things, you want to build things so that they are in the center of the world. So just an example here, I have my object X symmetry on right now. So you can just change that to Y, you can change it to Z, but I'm going to sit and do object X. And because the object is perfectly symmetrical and it's in the world, uh, in the center, if I go to vertex, if I go ahead and select, I'll select one of these back here, you can see it selects the other one on the other side. And if I lift this, it lifts on both sides. Uh, same thing if I go ahead and grab a face here, I can just grab one face, you can see it grabs two faces. Okay, so I mentioned before that if you're, if you don't see something in the world, then you don't really need to build it. That's an important thing to understand too, because you don't need to build stuff that is never going to be, never going to be seen in a scene. However, there are exceptions to that rule. When you're doing visual effects, VFX destruction, sometimes in those destruction sequences, they need different layers. Let's say the side of a building is being built and you have brick and you have mortar and you have uh, like a wood structure inside of that and maybe like a siding structure. All of those things need to be built because when they destroy the object, they you need to see these different um, pieces kind of come through with the destruction. But in general, if you're building something for games or you're building something for um, you know, just animation purposes and you're never going to see, let's say we're never going to see the inside of this drawer. It's never going to open. You don't really need to build the inside of the drawer. Uh, if you feel like you have to go right ahead, but it's going not really going to help you out in the end. Um, as you can see here, if you flip this over, there's nothing inside of here. I just, I have the back and all the pieces assembled, but there's just nothing inside. Now this could be, um, problematic if you're doing like some kind of, uh, you know, high-end rendering or something like that, where you may see through these little cracks here. And in that case, uh, you could probably do some kind of little tricky trick thing like I've done here, where I just put these little boards in, in those little openings so that that way, when it renders, you would never see the back face back here. So it doesn't look empty. So that's, that's one way you can get around that. So all these rules that I've given you are just stuff to get you started so you go in the right direction. In our next video, we're going to talk about primitives and how we build stuff from primitives. And we're going to talk about how to resize primitives, how to move them around, and just how to get started in our first project. So I really appreciate you watching. Thank you very much. And I will see you or you will see me in the next one. See ya. Bye.